Hello everyone, my name is Bella and welcome to our channel. We'd like to kick off our channel with our immigration story from Philippines. Today, we celebrate our 10th year wedding anniversary and our PR visa application approval. It took us almost two years to have the PR visa approval because of the pandemic, some unfortunate events, and some misses, mistakes from us. We will share with you through our channel. We did everything DIY. We did not hire any consultant or agency from job offer to PR visa approval. We just have a friend named Jess who helped us, introduced us with this program. And of course, every blessing that our family receive is from Almighty God. So if you are interested with our immigration story, please continue to watch our video until the end. Also, if you can hit the subscribe and like button, we'd appreciate it very much. Our dream started back in December 2018 when I was three months postpartum with my youngest son. My friend Jess introduced us with the AIPP program. At that time, she recently received a job offer. She took IELTS and ECA. And at that time, she was just waiting for the provincial endorsement decision. These are the three requirements of AIPP. Number one is job offer from a designated employer. Second is IELTS of level four, at least level four, of Canadian language benchmark. Third is Education Canadian Assessment, which should be at least high school graduate. I thought it was a scam when she said that she would need just 5,000 Canadian dollars for proof of funds for a family of three. It was just around 200,000 pesos. All I thought is that when you want to migrate to another country, you would need at least 1 million pesos. But she was saying it is not the case. So I did my research not to consider migrating, but to help my friend not to get scammed. So I landed to the IRCC website and confirmed that all she was saying was true. Yes, it was too good to be true, but I confirmed it is legitimate. And after all I have read about the program and all the success stories from the people who have landed to Canada through this program, I shared it with my husband. At that time, we were recovering from debt due to pregnancy and medical bills. We can't consider migrating because we don't really have any proof of funds. But my friend Jess encouraged us that money is the least that we can worry about. The biggest challenge for IPP program is the job offer. So husband and I decided to try our luck. Jess got an offer for a call center job in New Brunswick. So we tried to look for the same. She shared some tip on how to create cover letter and Canadian resume. She also shared that we need to make sure that the employer is a designated one. So husband and I started sending out resumes through all the job hunting platforms we could see online. Indeed, job bank, work copies, simply hired, all of those. Since we can't afford to process IELTS and ECA for both of us, we decided that whoever gets an interview invite first will be the principal applicant. We got several rejection emails. Some employers did not even send a response at all. But after two weeks of job hunting, we got an invitation for an interview for my husband. It was a series of interviews and exams online. That took about two months until we received a job offer on March 21st, just a day before his birthday. During that two-month period, we processed his IELTS and ECA. He took his IELTS on February 2nd and got the result, I think, about a week after that. Wes ECA took about two months to receive a result. It was just in time for provincial endorsement application. So another requirement for provincial endorsement was the settlement plan. Our employer endorsed us to a settlement agency, which is a government-funded agency. We just filled out a form for needs assessment, and that's it. Our endorsement application was submitted on May 23rd, and the next day we received the AOR. And in just less than two weeks, June 5th, we received a decision. That was really quick. We thought that everything 
is falling into places. And then we started to gather our documents for PR application. Okay, so we ticked everything on the document checklist and mailed in the application to Sydney, Nova Scotia. Then on July 4th, IRCC received the package. We had to email DHL because the tracking shows that the application was shipped to Ontario. It turned out that DHL hires a third-party affiliate to ship the package to, to Nova Scotia. We were expecting to receive the EOR four to six weeks upon submission, but we never received one. So we raised a web form on August 20th, and then we received a heartbreaking response. Our application was returned on a standard mail. At that time, I could imagine our documents piled up on a storage somewhere. We have heard horror stories of delays and lost mails using standard post. The most painful part is that IRCC did not mention which document or which part of it is missing. And another one is that our endorsement is expiring very soon. So we went to our local post office and uh, was hoping that we would see our package there. But no, no luck. And then we decided to wait until end of December. If we do not receive the package by then, we'll have to do it again. While waiting, we started to gather all the requirements. Good thing is that the only original copy that we submitted was the IELTS result and the police clearance. We were able to request another copy of IELTS from IDP and police clearance from NBI. End of September came without the package. So we raised a web form again, asking for a copy of the letter of explanation with the return documents. We received a response after 11 days, which was okay. At least they were able to provide the reason of the return documents. That mistake was so painful and costly for us. We risked our endorsement getting expired. At the time, New Brunswick stopped endorsing applications for accommodation and food industry. Our employer was considered as accommodation industry. So imagine our worry at that time. Upon receiving the reason of returned application, we had our TOR and diploma translated. Then we mailed in our application again to Nova Scotia. It was delivered to Nova Scotia on my birthday. And on December 3rd, just a day after the endorsement expiry date, we received our AOR together with a biometric instruction letter. January 28th, we received the medical request letter. We took the medicals on February 3rd. My husband got an x-ray findings. He had a lung scar due to childhood pneumonia. So he had to undergo a sputum test, which would take another nine weeks to get a result. And then, COVID happened. Instead of just nine weeks, it took us four months to get a result for medical. We had to wait for IOM to reopen in Manila. Pre-pandemic, AIPP would just normally take six months from AOR to visa approval. But with COVID, everything was blurred and uncertain. We just hold on to our faith and hope to God and prayed for the better future for our family. October 14, we requested for GCMS notes. Since we learned that some people found out that they were already approved through the GCMS notes, but never received any email, notification, or passport request. November 11, day before we got hit by the Typhoon Ulysses, we received a ghost update on our IRCC profile. Yes, the anxiety and agony <laughs> made me check the IRCC account every day. That's why I noticed the ghost update. Good news have started to come in days after we got hit by the typhoon. November 18, we received the GCMS notes indicating that we passed the eligibility. But security check has not yet started. And just five days later, we got passport request. We can't wait to start our new life chapter in Canada. But with travel restrictions in place, we can't travel yet. We are taking our time with our families here in the Philippines while dealing with pandemic. 
We hope to talk to you soon when we land in Canada. Yay, we got our passport. Yay. Happy.